What experience of yours is so crazy, you don't tell people about it because they wouldn't believe you. I have some vivid memories from when I was a baby. Most people's earliest memories are from when they're toddlers. But I remember bits and pieces of being an infant and getting breastfed by my mom. I also recall listening to her singing songs to me while rocking me and sitting in my crib for hours listening to music playing. I don't remember everything day by day but there are quite a few memories from that time. My earliest memory that I can fully recall is hearing my mom and dad arguing in clear view of my crib. I don't remember what they were saying but I know they were shouting at each other and I was getting upset because of it. Since I was in a crib. I know I couldn't have been a year old yet. Got a knife put to my throat as a joke once when I was little and decided to go play outside on my own. Only told my parents years later because I didn't want them to worry. Weird child logic. Looking back at it. I got hit by a car when I was about 8. And I was genuinely more worried about my family finding out than I was about being hurt. The guy that hit me knew my family. And word got round to them eventually. Since I pretty much ran off after I got up from the ground and said some incoherent things. He was still worried sick about me. And tried to find out how I was. I was right to fear their reaction. Got a good beating out of it. Edit because there seems to be some confusion. Not a joke. My family beat me because I was a dumbass for getting hit by a car. The same family that said it was my fault for getting molested as a kid and that just shrugged when my brother tried to kill me. Everything was perpetually my fault. It's like that Parks and Rec scene. You go to jail. I drop a plate. I get a beating. Someone else drops a plate. I get a beating. Also. Not Slavic. Moroccan. But not all Moroccans are like my family. The guy that hit me was also Moroccan and he was worried sick about me. Posted this on Reddit already once. And people thought I was making it up. I joined the Mile High Club. It was on a flight from New York to London. I just wanted to join the Mile High Club for a thrill. Not because I had a fetish for F King on airplanes or anything. It was quite uncomfortable and cramped really. We had a difficult time finding a position that worked. As I was coming we heard banging on the door. The flight attendant had somehow figured out and he began scolding us. What you did is illegal. Really giving us shit. We were panicking and trying to come up with a plan. Worrying that maybe we'd get into serious trouble once we landed. In the middle of all this the flight attendant came back with two glasses of champagne and winked at us. Once we realized he had been trolling us. Our mood changed instantly from worried to amused as fuck. I went with a friend to a weekend party in a mansion. I knew he was sorta sketchy. Dealing drugs and so. We came to the mansion and I didn't really think there was anything strange going on. As the evening went on we were all going to the sauna and there the drugs came out. These people were Lithuanian and I didn't understand shti what they were saying but when I didn't really want to do cocaine I could feel how the tension and the room went sour. My friend who also was Lithuanian spoke with them for what felt like hours when the lines of coke were just lying in front of me. After a while everyone started smiling. He had told them I was too big of a PSSY to do any drugs with criminals and was just a softie from Scandinavia. After that things calmed down and we went to bed at around 3. At 4 I was woken up by my friend who just screamed at me to get in the car. On the way out to the car I saw some people carrying a giant rug into the trunk of a car. I learned later that a guy had OD'd and he was in the rug. The people he had invited me to party with were the Lithuanian Mafia. Didn't really feel comfortable hanging around with him later when I learned that his friends that could drop by his apartment now and then were actually part of organized crime. I saw a girl who contracted a rare African parasite shoot crack causing tiny worms to crawl out of the hole in her arm and from the corners of her eyes. It happened. I'm sure it did. I saw the worms. She held one up and said. See. I told you. This is what they look like. I threw it on the floor and burned it with a lighter. I wasn't even on drugs because I had a drug test for probation in the morning. It's like my own brain is trying to convince me it didn't happen but I'm sure of it. On my first day of school. In I think social studies. I had a sudden feeling of content knowledge that I knew everyone. 
That kind of feeling you get when you've been there for a while. Which didn't make any sense. As it was the first day of school and I knew I didn't know any of these other kids. Then the feeling went away as I questioned it. And I shrugged it off. Until during the last week of school. In the same class. Bored and ready to go. I suddenly felt mildly panicked that I didn't know anyone. As if it was the first day again. Then I remembered how I felt on the first day. I think I experienced a time swap. Once as a landlord I had to break up a 18 person orgy. We had noise complaints which were common went to the room to check and things were odd. They would barely open the door to speak to me. They had the weirdest assembly of clothing on. And there was this weird salty smelling fog in the room. Finally just for documentation sake I had to have them sign my report and they said do you want all of us to sign? I said what? They turned on the lights and in the middle of the floor was a giant pile of naked ass. We are talking every gender. Every position. A clown. A midget. A toilet seat. All in one big pile gyrating. My presence wasn't going to stop the party. I then looked up at the TV. They had a gigantic 80 plus inch TV super high def playing the most explicit porn I've ever seen. I mean you could see razor burn. I had to shut down the party because the buildings were shitty and there was an occupancy limit in each room. You could only have 7 people in at a time. And they were over quota. All at once like 15 angry naked people got up and started storming out of the room and various of degrees of nakedness. I had to return to my office to write a report up and will be told to be as explicit as possible so I included the razor burn. The sloppy ham smack sounds. Everything. I got a call in the morning from the female manager going yeah we don't need that much detail. You are in trouble the owner wants to speak with you so she put on the elderly male owner and he exclaimed that was the best story I've ever read. Please write more. One time after school I was emptying my bag on my bed. I had a sandwich wrapped in cling wrap from lunch that I didn't eat. I dropped the sandwich on the floor and I went to pick it up. I couldn't find it anywhere. I checked under my bed. In my bag. All over the floor and under any items. I never found that sandwich. Edit. Thanks for the silver kind stranger. Dude. I had a friend who dropped an avocado in her kitchen and never found it. Even when they moved it never turned up. My dog doesn't like any toys except for one specific toy we got her which she loved. She never stopped playing with it the night she got it and I distinctly remember her playing with it under my parents bed and then leaving. Since then we've had the walls painted and gotten new flooring and never found it. My friend and I once missed the last train home after a gig and wandered around a nearby harbor. Killing time until the trains started up again. A drunk man, around 50 yo. 30 years older than us at the time, stumbled out of a building and invited us onto his boat. We sat with him drinking rum for a few hours while he regaled us with stories about all the SX parties he'd hosted on this boat. I didn't believe him but I was warm and had a drink in hand so I humored him. He eventually pulled a lever near the front which opened a secret door to a SX dungeon. Filled with all kinds of bondage gear and SX toys. We then added each other on Facebook and my friend and I went to catch our train back to London. Edit. He would tell us about the numerous women that were half his age that would come from all over the country to attend these parties. He would also tell us that he was absolutely unequivocally not gay. But would totally suck off the other guys in attendance because it was the polite thing to do. A pirate hero. Once when I was 8 I was climbing out of the bathtub after showering. Since I was wet and shit. My mom wrapped me up in a towel so my hands were wrapped as well. I ended up tripping over the edge of the bathtub and face planted onto the ground. Where I just laid there kinda comatose for a second. So I tried to get up. Blood flowing down my face from a cut in my head and my nose. And my bucket of crabs nearby, this was a seaside resort, toppled over and went all over me. And they were like in a blood frenzy or something because they pinched me all over so I started rolling on the ground. Lovely experience BTW, my family kinda just stared at me. I bled from my nose for 3 hours after being rescued from the crabs. And got sent to hospital. Where my nose actually wasn't broken. 
My family refuses to acknowledge it ever happened even though I have a hospital bracelet with that date. Oddest thing ever. Opened the fridge and a, uh, edit, jar of mustard came falling down. It hit the ground and I already thought. Great. Now I have to clean all of it up. Comma. But I genuinely didn't hear it hitting the ground. When I looked down there was nothing there. No glass shards. Mustard. Nothing. Looked around for a good 5 minutes questioning my reality. Turns out it kinda repelled of the ground and landed at the winner shelf, next to the fridge. Like one. Five feet above the floor. Upright. Standing. It straight up did a bottle flip off the floor. It dropped a solid six feet on hard ground and just bounced. Still questioning the laws of physics to this date. I was on a train and this train had one of those chains which you pull in case of an emergency and it stops the train and if you pull it for no reason you can face up to two years in prison and a huge fine. So I was just sitting and when I decided to get up to go to the washroom. I was kind of stuck so I used the nearest thing to help me get up and what I pulled was the chain. Suddenly the train stopped and I was like oh crap here I go to the prison. When suddenly people started running out of the train. P. S the train had no doors you would understand if you know what an average local Indian train looks like I don't know about other countries, and what I realized was that a compartment of the train was on fire. So. That's how I survived from going to prison and accidentally saved the train. I told this story to a friend but he would not believe me so I just let it go. TLDR I save train and no go prison. Colon. Close bracket. When I was younger I worked at a popular theme park in the UK as a ride assistant. One of the rides I worked on was the River Rapids. Two young scouse lads who had obviously been drinking got on and it was clear they were going to be a pain in the ass. As their raft came towards the end. They both were running around the outsides of it. The raft hits the wall and they both fell in. This is near the lift section of the ride which if they'd been snagged would have torn them up badly. I ran down and god knows how. Managed to pull them both out. They were both swiftly escorted to the medical center and I'm assuming off park. The same day. After I finish work. I went to go and see a friend for a few hours and on my way home I follow a car that is all over the place. The car hits a curb and flips onto its roof. I stop my car. Run across. Yank the doors open and pull both of the occupants out. Same two lads I'd pulled out of the water at work earlier in the day. This happened in August. Me and my cousin were biking and skateboarding to the park. When we were about to cross the street there was one car a few intersections so we started cross. Turns out that idiot was on his phone. He starts speeding but we are not worried because he still had to go through two stop signs but being distracted from his phone he just ran through the stop signs and now he was coming straight for us. I got to the other side quickly but my cousin who didn't hear me was still going slowly and then at the last second before the car hit him he jumped out of the way safely. When he jumped that caused the board to hit their windshield and went inside the car, it was a convertible with its top down. 5 seconds after the person puts the car in reverse. Pulls up beside us and says you know you could have died right? And with that he sped off with my cousin's skateboard. No one believed us because they thought it was just an excuse for losing the board. I was walking out of my open plan flat with my friend and was locking the door when he laughed and pointed out I was still holding my fork from lunch. I unlocked the door and stood by the doorway. Did some manga type building of energy through the fork. And threw my arm out in the direction of the kitchen as hard as I could. Watched along the length of my arm as my fork shot across the room and ended up inside the cutlery drainer the correct way up. I looked back at him and his mouth was agape and he couldn't talk. He genuinely thought I was a Jedi or something. Nobody else has believed the story. Mostly due to the absurdity of my physical diagram of throwing the fork. I lived in the tropics. Really safe neighborhood. One day this white duck appears. The street starts putting basins of water out and leaving corn and whatnot. One night, about midnight, I get off the bus and am beginning the short walk home. The moon was large and bright. I come around the corner and see the white duck glowing in the moonlight about 10 meters in front of me. Cute. Then I look beyond the duck and see a woman dressed in a white dress standing dead still. 
She starts convulsing and she bends the wrong way. There was someone else with her. Though I couldn't see them clearly. She was making these noises. I would have had to walk past her to get home quicker. But I said not today Satan and walked an extra 500 meters to get home. The next day the duck was gone. I think about that duck all the time. We had an exchange student living with us when I was in high school. After almost a full year I graduated and moved 200 miles away while he had another year left. As a parting gift I took one of his hoodies that I really liked and that he rarely wore anyways. Forward 2 years. I still live in the new town I went to Union, 1. 5M inhabitants. I randomly go to the movies midweek with my GF at the time. Wearing that very hoodie. The movie theater is almost empty. We got a few minutes to spare before the movie starts. So I tell my GF the story about the hoodie. Never told anyone about it before that. Once I finish the story I hear from the seat next to me, the only other seats occupied. Oh. So that's where my shirt went. So there he was. Midweek. In a town 200 miles from home. Choosing the same cinema. Same movie and same screening as me. Having the seat next to mine the one and only time I've ever told the story about how I got that hoodie. Absolutely insane. I was lost for words. Haven't seen him since. And this happened like 15 years ago. Haha. <laughs> oh I've tried to tell people. When I was 18 I was driving home from my friend's house really late. On the way home I passed an elementary school with a fully fenced tennis court. When I looked over there was like 30 people inside with masks holding baseball bats and the large gate was open. They were all frozen until I rounded the corner and started running full speed at me. I barely made it around the corner before someone tried jumping in the bed of my truck. It was literally the scariest thing ever and no one ever believes me. I'm sure it was some funny joke but it wasn't funny at 3am. I have lived an entire day twice. It is like deja vu but extended version. And. That was a very weird day with things happening which has least probability of happening. It is almost like I woke up in the morning after a weird hyper realistic dream. But all the things in the dream were unlikely to happen in real life. Like for example. It involved only 15 students coming to my class that day while in reality the number has never ever dropped below 45 out of 60 students. Then the weird thing is that everything in my dream came true exactly until I broke the chain by doing something which was not there in the dream. In dream. I yelled at the principal. In real life I restrained from doing that. It was the weirdest thing ever. I live in Brazil. So English is not my first language I only knew a few words thanks to my PlayStation 2. So one day when I was 7 stroke 8 years old I woke up to go to school and my parents were looking at me with a scared face. When I asked them what had happened they told me I woke up in the middle of the night went to the living room and started to perfectly speak English. My mom said I kept almost 3 minutes saying things like I was reading a text. And I don't remember anything. But after that for some reason I had gigantic facility in learning. That is still kinda scary to me. This isn't the most wild thing to ever happen to me but it happened yesterday so it was fresh in my brain. My fiance and I were walking through the Atlanta airport and we walked past a bar that prompted him to say that's where I was when I saw Mackenzie Milton last year. Comma Mackenzie Milton is the UCF quarterback who had a horrific leg breaking injury last year in the prime of his career. What my fiancé meant was that was the bar he was at watching the game when he saw the injury, and then drank heavily because he loves that team and Milton and that was heartbreaking. Comma I thought he meant that he had seen Mackenzie Milton in that bar and I said wow what are the odds that you would see him in the Atlanta airport. He corrected me on what he actually meant. 20 minutes later. We are boarding the plane and my fiancé is sitting in the aisle seat and smacks me and tells me to look up. He saw a guy wearing Chick-fil-A bowl shorts, which UCF had played in and won with Milton as their quarterback, and had a knee brace on and my fiancé kinda chuckled to himself and thought lol must be Mackenzie Milton and he looked up and it was Mackenzie F. King Milton. It was just such a weird coincidence. I could not wrap my head around it. I was at a video slot casino. Playing video blackjack. And this old man next to me hit the lucky ladies jackpot for $9. 000. 
His face turned even whiter than it already was. And he turned to me and literally begged me to claim it for him. And that nobody is supposed to know he is here. He said he would split it with me. I asked a few questions. Taxes. Yada yada. And I claimed it. Deducted the $3 K tax. And he gave me $1. 700 cash for the favor. I had gotten fired that day. And with that money. Purchased a laptop. Did some graphic work. And was able to move back home to be close to my parents. Landing a good job and living happily ever after. Granny next door was pronounced dead early one winter morning. By noon. Relatives and neighbors had gathered to offer condolences. And that's when she just got up. When the shti settled down. We asked her what happened. She said that men in black robes came to fetch her late at night. Said it was her time. They took her to their master who looked at her and shook his head. He said there was a mistake and that they got the wrong person. He nudged her shoulder back and that's when she got up. People were creeped out. But still relieved that the lady was alright. That was until we learned that two streets down. A much younger lady by the same name. Had passed away of natural causes just around that time. I was driving home about 8 years ago at night along my usual route. It's a narrow straight road that has no street lights but is reasonably busy even at night and is about 2 miles long before I reach my exit. I'm driving. Listening to music and contemplating. Well. Nothing when I notice there's a light in the sky following me. There's a tiny runway near my old house used mainly by crop dusters. So I assume it's a small plane. Then I notice another. Then another and another until there's at least 10 lights all following me as I drive down this road. They're not in any kind of formation and there's not a single sound except the sound of my engine. I pull over and they slow down and hover as I get out of the car. I'm the only one on the road at this point. As I reach back into my car to get my phone to take some video. They suddenly all move at incredible speed I to a single. Straight line and zoom off into the distance at incredible speed. I stood there stunned for at least 5 minutes. Knowing that no one would ever believe me. When I was 14 I was making myself a cup of coffee or tea. Can't quite remember. But I had a teaspoon placed in my mug. As I was turning I kind of hit pushed the top of the spoon with my left hand and it landed on the floor like 2 feet away from me. I picked it up. Turned around and the teaspoon was still in the mug. Now I had 2 teaspoons. To this day I'm not sure if I had 2 teaspoons that sticked with one another in that mug or did I do some weird item doubling magic lol. When I was 8 or 9 my buddies and I were racing our BMX bikes to school. It was a cold night so as the cars had splashed water all over the sidewalk during the night it froze into this slick skating rink. I was the lead bike and as I tried to round the corner I wiped out on the ice and slid right across the highway. Right under a fucking semi truck. Popped out the other side unscathed with the front tire of my bike completely smashed. Truck rolled right over the tire and completely missed me. I once left my completely fine and working mobile phone in the kitchen and went to lay down for a little on my roommate's couch. He and I were alone at home and he is a very active gamer and was basically gaming throughout my nap. When I woke up I wanted to get my phone. But when I went and got it. It had the signal for sim not connected on it. So I open up the phone to look at my sim. Just to find the metal part of the sim could completely scratched and utterly destroyed. Of course I asked my roommate what he did to my phone but he just said he was gaming the whole time and was just as astounded as I was. To this day we are completely flabbergasted and do not know what happened. But I am pretty positive that we have a poltergeist in our flat. It's actually a shared experience between me. Two of my aunts and my sister. It happened when I was 11. My aunt was visiting our house. I lived with my mom. My other aunt and my two sisters. Comma both my aunts were talking and catching up and her son, my 6 month old cousin, was getting fussy. I offered to take him and brought him back to my room to lay him on the bed and play with him. He was fine for a while but got fussy again so I went to take him back to his mother. In the hallway closet on the way out to the living room and kitchen was our washer dryer. Someone had taken out clothes from the dryer and left the basket in front of it during the time I was in my room. 
I ended up tripping on the basket and my cousin fell out of my arms and into the air. This all happened in slow motion for me but I remember catching myself. Leaping forward and catching my cousin just before hitting the floor like he was a damn football. Suddenly it's really quiet. My youngest sister was staring from the living room couch and my aunts were staring. Jaws dropped. At the kitchen table. He starts screaming and my aunt rushed over to pick him up and keeps thanking me and laughing hysterically out of nervousness. Confusion and probably just the situation in general. We told this story to my cousin years later and he just doesn't believe us. We haven't shared it since but my aunt made a joke about it when I was holding my own child and tripped a little over an area rug. You're clumsy. But I know you won't let that kid hit the floor. Double quote. One day completely out of the blow my daughter, 8, started telling me she wanted to look out the window to see shooting stars. I told her it's very rare to see any shooting stars where we live, yonkers. NY. Close bracket. She was really adamant that we should look and try to see one anyway. So I walk with her over to our living room window and look out with her. I swear not 10 seconds had passed before a beat it all went streaking by. Closer than any I had ever seen. You could see the trail it left in the sky and it glowed bright red. She got so excited and ran to tell my wife that she saw one. My wife does not believe that to me or my daughter saw a beat her that quickly. I swear on my life it happened. This happened 8 years ago. I, 10 years old, was walking my dog down the street with my father. And my dog decided to take a piss on the car wheel of a Mercedes Benz. A couple minutes later that exact Mercedes Benz slowly drives past us and then U turns around and slowly drives past us again. This time he opens his window and shouts FCKU to us multiple times without explanation. After cursing at us for like a minute straight he speeds off back into the neighborhood so we just continue on our walk. As soon as we get back into our street we see the man walking towards us and pull out a gun. He aims it at us and shouts your dog pee my wheel. Over and over again. Of course my dad gets very angry and shouts back at him do you think this is the fking wild west? Comma. He then starts shooting at us but misses completely then my dad sprints at him and manages to tackle him to the ground. I go and get my mother and we call the police meanwhile my dad still has the guy pinned down. The police come and take the guy away and we then find out that he was a big Chinese drug dealer in the area. So this is basically the story of how my dad took down a Chinese gangster whilst unarmed. I met some very friendly people on a very rainy, miserable day in the middle of nowhere in Scotland. A summer some years back. The reason we got talking is because my friends and I walked in. Soaked from the rain and cold to the bone. And they were the only other people there. Very friendly. We had a great time. It was a nice rustic cafe with a fireplace and it looked straight out of a movie. About 2 hours later. We've all warmed and dried up and decide to leave. We don't exchange any details. Couple. 3. 4. Comma years later I am visiting a friend in Buenos Aires. She gives me some tips and tops and I end up going to some random place she told me not to go. I got on a bus. Get out on a random stop and fancy a beer. I walk into the first bar I see and as soon as I enter I lock eyes with one of the people I met years ago in Scotland. Without missing a beat he raises his glass and loudly proclaims weather is a lot better here. Son. Join us. And I walk up to the table and only then notice that all the other people from Scotland are there too. This is going to sound really dumb and most people will say I dreamt it. I probably was but I'm just going on what I vividly remember in my memory. When I was around 8 I couldn't sleep and was just laying in bed when I saw what looked like 3 dragonflies in the room. Yes dragonflies. From where I'm from they practically don't exist so I was terrified as there were 3 fking giant bugs flying around the room. I ran to my parents and slipped and fell on the carpet and cried. That's when my parents came rushing to my room and spent the whole night with me. I kept telling them what I saw but we checked the entire apartment and there was literally nothing. I even remember seeing one flying under the bed whilst my parents were looking the other direction and we checked and there was still nothing. We laugh at the story with my parents now but I swear it was so vivid and now I don't even know if I trust myself. Yeah it's not as interesting as other stories here lol. 
I was driving to work one cold and snowy morning back in January 2016 and decided to take the shorter route to work because I had forgotten to set up alarms the night before. There are several safer routes that I could have taken instead but stupid 21 year old me decided I could make it in on time if I took the short yet steeper and poorly lit road which did not require me to cross one bridge and drive through four ridiculous intersections. I gently stepped on my brakes to slow down as I traversed downward due to the slippery conditions but unfortunately ended up losing control and spiraling crazily. I must have made at least 4 or 5 full circular rotations in my car and not going to lie. I legit thought that was it for me yet I don't know how I remained calm all throughout but I managed to steer my car to the foot of the hill safely without hitting anything, thankfully, and drove on to work as if nothing had happened. I told my dad about it later that day but he would not believe me so I eventually took him to the exact location where it occurred and he still thought I was making stuff up. I lived a double life in high school full of partying and drugs, I didn't do the drugs. They were just around me. Lived in the Philippines and at night I would go to the red light district and go to strip clubs and whatnot and just kinda hang out and drink and watch the strippers. Became a regular at one place to the point where I would get free drinks because the strippers and bartender liked me. No one believes me because I was 16-17 at the time. Did that stuff for like a year before I figured a I should probably stop. Double quote. One of my escapades involved a guy trying to aggressively sell me Viagra. So I had to go hide in a strip club for a couple hours. The guy wouldn't leave. Ended up making out with one of the strippers and didn't get home until about 3 to 4 a.m. Not so much on the crazy side just people don't believe me. When I was maybe about 10 years old I was obsessed with Taylor Swift. That year for a Christmas or birthday present. Hazy memory. My mum got me tickets to see her in Manchester. I was obviously elated getting there and we were seated kinda near the back. Being 10 years old that didn't really bother me though. However. As it was, I think, her fearless. Again hazy. Tour she wasn't quite as popular in the UK as she is now. And there were still some empty seats. Halfway into the warm up act a security guard asks us if we want to be freely upgraded to better seats so of course we said yes. We ended up being seated one row in front of the B stage with a great view. I was stood on my chair singing along when I get a tap on the back Taylor Swift's mum asking if I want to meet her. She lifts me over the barrier and after Taylor sings her songs on the B stage she comes and hugs me. Must have been a regular occurrence on that tour as there was about 5 of us stood there and I've never really seen that happen at any other concerts I've attended. People don't believe me because there is literally no video footage, I've scoured YouTube. And my mum had pictures on her iPhone 3GS at the time which she never backed up onto a computer or anything. 